Joseph Smith. The LDS put out a movie called The Restoration. I believe it is available for viewing on YouTube. In this movie, it seems to me, the 19th century American church is badly misrepresented. The impression clearly given was that the many Protestant denominations were in vigorous disagreement with one another, and the Catholic Church, I suppose, as well, uh, with the Protestant denominations, uh, so much so that the teenager Joseph Smith could not figure out which he ought to believe, which, which sect to join. The fact of the matter is, however, that the Christian Church in the 19th century, like the Christian Church today, and during the patristic period was in agreement on essential points of doctrine. There are important differences between, say, the Baptist and the Presbyterian traditions, but too much should not be made of this. These doctrinal distinctives are with respect to secondary and hence relatively unimportant doctrines. When it comes to cardinal or essential Christian doctrines, all denominations are in total agreement. Again, it is certainly important whether Calvinistic predetermination is true or not, especially if one happens to be a Calvinist, and I'm not a Calvinist, by the way. Uh, but this is not important. An, this is not as important an issue as, for example, the doctrine of the Holy Trinity. While there are significant uh, differences, the similarity or even complete agreement on non-negotiables is even more significant. C.S. Lewis called this fundamental unity amongst all Christians throughout all time mere Christianity. How do we know what mere Christianity as opposed to, say, Lutheranism is? A good place to start is with the ecumenical creeds. Any denomination which agrees with the early creeds is merely Christian, or simply Christian, or purely Christian. Any that disagree is not Christian at all, for the creed state what all Christendom has always believed. Another way to look at this is through the distinction made by Augustine. St. Augustine spoke of the visible church on the one hand and the invisible church on the other. All of the denominational divisions are present only within the visible church, but the true church is invisible. The invisible church is composed of all true Christians, and all true Christians are in complete agreement on fundamental biblical doctrine. There is no disagreement whatsoever. In contrast to the visible church, the invisible church has the unity which Jesus and Paul both speak about, the quote, one faith, one baptism, unquote. What the LDS don't seem to realize is that any religious movement is going to splinter over time. The Mormon movement itself has splintered into numerous denominations. Some still practice polygamy and some do not, for example. Yet one of the selling points for joining the LDS church is that it is unified. It is not split up between Catholicism and numerous Protestant sects, but this is only so if one defines the other Mormon groups out of existence. They're not real Mormons, we are told. But these other Mormon groups say the very same thing about the LDS. Whose personal testimony are we to believe? So the first point I wanted to make about the Restoration movie was its inaccurate portrayal of unity in the church in the 1800s. In other words, the church was not united in the 1800s, uh, doctrinally speaking. The other point I wanted to make was with respect to prayer. It is quite true that the Bible teaches the importance and the efficacy of prayer. However, the passage in James chapter 2 about praying for wisdom is continuously abused by Mormons. If Joseph wanted to pray for wisdom about which denomination to join, that is one thing. However, prayer was never intended as the epistemological be-all and end-all. God gave us a mind and he expects us to use it. If we think God is giving us wisdom, through a prayer-induced feeling, and the passage in James does not claim that he will do that, that revelation that we get from God cannot contradict our other, uh, cannot contradict our reason or other revelation, say, to be found in the Bible itself. I will go into more detail on this in another video. For now it is sufficient to point out that prayer slash feelings is not the sort of thing one would want to base an entire world view and all of one's life and afterlife on. 
but this is exactly what Mormons do. So praying for wisdom is okay, but when it comes to obtaining knowledge of truth, prayer slash feelings alone should not be the uh, primary means we use to obtain that truth. That is the second point I wish to make regarding the events portrayed in the Restoration movie. Shalom.